Hi, I'm Mark Krexler with The Climatographers and theclimateweb.com. And in this, in this video, I want to explore the question of what can we do with infinite climate change information, which is what we're basically faced with today. So to put this into a little bit of uh, context, you know, I've been working in this field now for about 30 years and have increasingly come along with you know, most of the rest of the literature to see this as the ultimate climate communications problem. And this political cartoon sort of illustrates some of the elements of why that's the case. Certainly not all of them, but some of the ones that make the communications challenge so naughty. Now, a number of years ago, almost 10 years ago at this point, I saw a presentation by the authors of this book, Influencer, and I was fascinated by it. They were basically arguing that any human decision, doesn't matter what it is, any human decision involves a person asking his or herself two questions. Is the decision worth it to me? And is there something I can do to influence the outcome that I care about? And you know, this answering those two questions requires actionable knowledge for that individual. And as I watched this presentation, I realized how challenging that was and how much I'd been leaving on the table as a management consultant. Because you go in, you give a talk, but you're not really helping those people answer their two questions. You're telling them how you've answered those two questions for yourself, and you're expecting them to walk out of the room with an epiphany. It doesn't work that way. And so I was fascinated by this uh, topic. And in fact, the next day we started building what has since become the climate web in terms of using a technology solution to try and get at the ability to organize information in a way that can help answer those two questions for any range of uh, individuals. Now, what we've done, and I'm not going to go into this in, in any detail in terms of how we've built it. You can stop and take a look at some of the statistics if you want. But this is this sort of explains very briefly the process going into building the climate web. The more important aspect of this is how to think of where we are now and how to think of the climate web. Is it a finished product? Is it sort of this very impressive uh, Lego elephant made up of a huge number of Lego pieces? Or is it something more akin to a massive pile of Lego building blocks? Now, clearly, the, the climate web has a form, it has a shape, uh, but it also is a pile of Lego building blocks. And I want you to bear that in mind because it, it, it sort of might help you frame your thinking on what one can do with that pile of Lego building blocks if you can get away from thinking of it as the pre-existing elephant that I showed you a second ago. Now, I'm going to jump into the climate web and show you some things there. So give me just a second. So now we're in the climate web itself. This is the uh, public climate web index is differentiated from the business climate web index. And the index is the best way to explore the climate web. If you're not looking for something specific and don't know exactly where you're trying to go, there are actually about 3,000 index entries. So it gets pretty granular. Uh, but it organizes a huge amount of information. And I'm just going to click, for example, on the climate change mitigation topic. That opens up a whole bunch of additional index entries uh, that you can uh, go into. So, for example, given the communications challenge that I talked about earlier, let me just open up the climate communications index entry. Now, what you see here is a whole bunch of other uh, index entries that you can explore. But Climate communications is also a, as you can see here from the title, is a uh, deep dive. And what that means is that a bunch of information here is organized consistently. You can go into uh, the literature, you can go into the news stories, you can go into the multimedia, knowledge bases, networks. So just for example, if I click on the CC communications topical, the S, which stands for uh, sources, what that will do is open up literally hundreds of sources relating to the topic of climate change communications. Many of these you can take a look at in the climate web. Other subcategories of topics, climate communications, communicating no urgency, communications frames, communications tools, um, you know, general communication, media coverage, popular climate books, public beliefs and knowledge, the terms we use, all kinds of things. Uh, it is the literature of the climate communications topic. Now, if I click on climate communications news in the N category for news stories, 
that will do the same thing, but within the category of news stories and opinion pieces. Hundreds of things across numerous topics, uh, year, several years worth of information in terms of being able to track the tenor of all of these different conversations that are uh, going on. Now, this is, a, as I mentioned, climate communications is a deep dive, and I'm just going to click on this tag. Uh, we have about 80 deep dives ranging across all kinds of topics, climate engineering, business risk, business response, carbon offset, cities and climate change, all kinds of things. And I'm not going to go into more detail. They're all structured basically the same way as the communications climate web that I just showed you. But digging into the deep dives may not be the easiest way for a lot of people uh, to, to get into some of the topics that they're looking for. So let me show you in the headings. Here we've organized a lot of headings tags, uh, and this is for a lot of topics. So just for example, clicking on the low carbon transition headings collection. Here you see a bunch of headings, all of which relate to the low carbon uh, transition. So you can go in here and you can look at sources, uh, you can and look at the different uh, literatures, you can look at news stories, you can look at graphics collections, knowledge base uh, collections, which I'll explain in a minute, and uh, networks. So you can look at a ton of different headings and clicking on any of these headings will take you to that category of information in the climate web. And so you can you know, pretty rapidly zero in on what might be of most interest uh, to you. And again, lots of different uh, headings in here. Now, to get to the next sort of level of sophistication of the climate web, it's what we think of as dashboards. And as you can see here, there are lots of different dashboards covering lots of different topics. These are labeled 101 dashboards. The idea here is how can you organize information that might allow us to get past the very basic conversation that tends to monopolize uh, almost all the conversations that are going on out there. Very tough to get past the 101 level. We can put together 202, 303, 404 dashboards, but in most cases, the conversation hasn't progressed past the 101 level. Now, just to give you an example, let me pull up the carbon pricing uh, dashboard because that's such a, a well-considered topic. This is a case where it makes sense for me to pull in an alternative view of this information the mind map view. What you can see here is that we've introduced the topic with a series of thoughts, and you can see information popping up over there in the notes field uh, for each of these different thoughts, sort of introducing key people to the key topics associated with carbon pricing as a topic. Index entries, headings are shown there, but then you can keep going over here. We can show people key graphics that we've pulled together uh, for uh, particular points. We can get it and uh, show people key reports and what we've extracted from key reports, and they can look at those reports. We can show people key uh, index entries that we've, uh, not index entries, news stories that we've pulled together, and uh, it'll automatically jump and open those news stories uh, up. So do the same with key websites. Uh, this one doesn't want to come up. Let me try the Carbon Tax Center. Um, taking a second, but it'll come up. So you're know, you basically pulling together in this dashboard a, a core amount of information from the enormous amount of information that is in the carbon pricing deep dive, for example. And this is uh, can be modified to, to all kinds of, of, uh, of ends. So let me go ahead and go back to a normal view. So that was dashboards. Um, Another way of thinking about this is what we call if only experts tag. Now, what if only refers to here is Carla O'Dell's knowledge management quote, if only we knew what we know. I love the quote. And in the case of climate change, you know, if only we knew what the hundreds of leading experts were thinking about and saying. Uh, and, and to some extent, we do with the climate web. We have hundreds of experts covered in here. I, just a few of them are represented. Uh, here under that are, as, are tagged for this part of, of this uh, video. And so just for example, if we click on Jonathan Haidt, sociologist, I really like his uh, work. What you'll see is his wiki page, uh, Wikipedia page opens up on the right-hand side, so that's there. But a lot of his material here opens up 
uh, right, uh, right here in terms of, of different videos and different reports. Uh, this happens to be a video that, that we uh, like and use. It's, I, I think it's a must-see video for anyone interested in climate change. You can play the video right here, and it'll play right within uh, the climate web. But he, in this case, and we, we haven't done this by any means for the 2,000 videos in the climate web, but in this case, we've actually pulled out what the key points he made in the report. So much as we do it with books, for videos, if you pull out those key points, you can see in about 15 seconds sort of the main messages that he had without necessarily listening to and quickly forgetting the full 45 minute interview with Bill Moyers, which is what this um, uh, represents. So it's just another way of organizing um, information and trying to provide uh, information value. So going back up to another category of if only, in this case, if only books and uh, reports, again, hundreds, actually more than a thousand, but but we haven't, uh, uh, we don't provide sort of summaries and details for all 1,000. We haven't had a chance to read all of them yet. Uh, but, but if you go into some of, you can see here that a lot of these have um, thumbnails that will quickly pop up for you to read, and it gives you a pretty good sense of sort of what that book was uh, about. Obviously, these books are also organized topically in uh, in all kinds of ways. But I'm going to pick on one here, this, this report, uh, Establishing Accountability for Climate Change Damages. I'm going to click on that document. You can see that it opens up in the right-hand side. You can actually read the report there. But you can also see that we've pulled out sort of key information, key snapshots of key uh, ideas. Now, if I click on one of these, what you're going to see is that all of this, all, whenever you see this kind of information, it's labeled with its source. You can see it hovering just below there. All of these thoughts link back to their original source, even though you may not see it right off the bat. Um, and they link into what we call knowledge bases. And knowledge bases are collections of ideas of spe uh, specific to a topic, but not specific to a source. So uh, work from a bunch of different uh, authors and sources will be collected together in the uh, knowledge base. So this knowledge base for liability risk associated with climate change tons of information in here, um, and you can follow any of that back up to its original source if you are uh, interested in it. So what we have here is, is just an example of how we take information, we mine information from these, from different reports and books and news stories, et cetera, and then organize it in ways that allows you to, to explore it, in this case, using the knowledge base idea here are just a few of the hundreds of knowledge bases that make up uh, the climate web. You can just sort of see the kinds of categories, but but again, a few of, of hundreds. We do the same kind. We do the same thing with graphics. So we will extract hundreds, thousands of graphics, each one done individually. There's no AI here, um, and what you can then see is you can go in, and I'm just going to pick fire impacts for example. And so what we've done here is we've pulled together a large number of, imp of graphics specific to the topic of fire and fire impact. And you can see what those graphics are. Uh, you can pop them up on your screen. You can jump back. You can jump to where the graphic came from in terms of the original source and see what, what else was in the source. But this is just another way of, say, of, of finding sort of categories of information that you might be looking for and that might be particularly useful to you at a given point in uh, time. So a lot of ways that we're slicing and dicing information. Uh, two more quick things. Another, a yet more sophisticated approach to what we're doing, uh, sort of the trending topics and stories, and there aren't a huge number of them. Uh, but just for example, story came out a couple of years ago, the first carbon neutral uh, airport. You know, you can jump to that uh, new story right there in, in uh, the climate web, but you can also watch a short video that we prepared that sort of explores the key questions, uh, you know, the history of the idea, what is it, 
what's really going on, what are some of the issues that you might want to think about in, in, in talking about uh, carbon neutrality. So that's the idea of trending stories and topics. And last, one of the ways that we help people sort of use the climate web is by, through doorways. So in this case, Nigel Powell uh, out of the UK identified a series of topics that he wants to be able to access instantly in the climate web without having to navigate the climate web. So once you go through and find the things that you're interested in, you put them all into a doorway and you can jump to that topic instantly. You come in through your own URL into the climate web and, and it almost becomes your own sort of search uh, feature and own research department by being able to organize anything in the climate web into your own uh, doorway. And we can do that for uh, anyone. So I'm going to jump back out to the original presentation. Give me just a second. So I've jumped out of the climate web and, and hopefully what I've showed you uh, gives you a sense of why we think of this as building blocks and, and why, yes, we've created a lot of different structures, uh, many different structures, but they, they you think of them as perhaps small kits that then can be built into bigger kits depending on what one needs or on, on a particular kind of actionable knowledge that you're trying to deliver to a particular audience. Now, one of the audiences that, that we've used this with and that we've worked with are uh, businesses. And just as an example, one Fortune 100 company that, that we worked with and did quite a bit of work with, you know, talks about how the climate web is like having a hundred leading experts in climate science, risk, risk management, and corporate strategy collaborating with you at the decision-making table. Now, that's not necessarily what everyone's looking for, but I think the idea is such that we can organize the information in the climate web to, to help anyone feel like they have the 100 leading experts that they need at the table with them to help inform them, help do whatever they're trying uh, uh, to do. So the questions that I'd like to sort of leave with you and, and pose to you as a result of this presentation is, you know, thinking about the, the climate web as a resource as is. I mean, for some purposes, it's, it's, there's nothing better out there uh, and it's a great resource for other purposes. It's in its current form, probably not. Uh, the idea of doorways into the climate web. So you leave the climate web as it is, but you use a doorway to access the information that you frequently are uh, looking for. And those doorways can be modified over time. Last, they're sort of reorganizing the Legos. How could the, the building blocks in the climate web be, be reorganized for specific purposes? Uh, all kinds of ways to do it, and the software makes it quite easy. Um, and last, you know, building your own Lego kit. One of the things that we can do with the climate web is give somebody a slice of the climate web for the topic that they're interested in, and they can go build their own brain. They can, they can use the brain software to build their own brain totally independent of the climate web. So it's a way of doing your own knowledge management system um, without the constraints of, of, of the climate web. So those are sort of four questions that, that I would hope, I would welcome the opportunity to follow up with you on in terms of your particular perspective. Uh, something else that we've been thinking about that's relevant here is you know the climate web is a massive knowledge management. It's an all-in-one climate change knowledge management solution covering hundreds of topics, and, and that makes it challenging. One of the things that we're doing is building mini brains. You know, so we have a mini brain there for climate podcasts, or a mini brain for sports in a future climate, or mini brain for the future of wine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We can have as many of these mini brains as we want. These mini brains are much smaller, much simpler. In fact, many of them you can access and use totally well on your iPhone. Uh, you don't even need a desktop computer. And so, you know, another way of thinking about how to get actionable knowledge in front of people when and where they uh, can actually make the best uh, use of it. So based on that, the, um, you know, our contact info, I would uh, welcome the opportunity to follow up with you and, and talk about these questions and explore how we can make the climate web useful to, uh, to you and to your audiences and ultimately how we can use the climate web to help advance the cause of climate change uh, mitigation. Thanks.